It's never boring being a Chelsea fan, that's one thing for certain. Everyone's asking me, Alex, Potter out, Potter in. Instagram in me DMs, Potter out, Potter in. What are you gonna do? Well, I've got the answer for you, but sadly, this isn't the main object of the conversation today. We've got two issues of two players doing two things that, in my opinion, are literally regressing to the me. And this frustrates me. It brings everyone back down to the norm. Mason Mount hugging players, basically kissing players after the game when we are 10 and you've got Mudrick not knowing how to use social media. Yes, not knowing how to make use social media and firing shots at Kukurea. Let's get into this, because we need to break. Welcome to the Gaff guys, you guys. And today's video, I'm going to speak from the chest. Video's not planned. I literally did not sit down and absolutely script what I was going to say to make sure I get my thoughts out. I'm literally going off the cuff. I'm speaking from here, the Kurasan, the heart, the Sierza. And we're going to understand what is going to happen at this club. Before we go on, clip this, send it around to your friends, share the content. That's how you guys can best help. Number two, subscribe and like the video. We're aiming for a thousand likes and maybe a thousand subscribers on this, so we're perfect. And follow me on Instagram in the pinned comment. But the best way, like I said, you can share this is by sharing clips. And number two, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's get on. Now that you're here, let's get, you're here to stay basically. Let's get into the video. Mason Mount, right, in my opinion, is a good player. I want this to be on record where I say Mason Mount has got a lot of attributes that will make him a very good squad player for Chelsea. To the point where he can play numerous positions like yesterday, he came on at left wing. He can fit in, he can do a job in the midfield, he can play right wing, he can play 10. He is a very good player and we need to appreciate what we have. But at the same time, when your unique selling point is I'm proper Chelsea, because that's what I consistently hear, he's proper Chelsea. He cares for the badge, he bleeds the badge, He's the only one that claps for the fans at the end of the game. He is Mr. Chelsea. I don't want to see what I saw at the end of the game. We are 10th. We've got two wins in the last 13 games. Let that rattle all of our brains once. Two wins in the last 13 games. Chelsea Football Club, big boy Chelsea Football Club. Two wins, 13 games. Mason Mount at the end of the game, smiling, happy, hugging Emerson and care. I'm sorry, I know when I have a bad day at the office, it don't mean I need to go somewhere and not smile and be upset. But our jobs are different. I don't have 50,000 people on a weekly basis paying money to watch me play. No one is as emotionally invested in my job the way people, football fans are in football. So he's in a different criteria of work. He is in a different realm of expectation. He's in a different industry where the expectations are different. I'm not saying be upset. I'm saying, cool, give, give a nice handshake, swap t-shirts, the normal shebang. But don't be there hugging someone, putting them in a, a noogie, that's what we used to call it in school. You know, when you go like this on someone's head, smiling, laughing, and almost not caring about the result. We have literally dropped to 10. We're not going to make Champions League football. And the player whose unique selling point is he's proper Chelsea, is the least emotionally affected by this result. You've got João Felix who's been here two weeks, stropping off, walking off, upset in the press conference. We're gonna try to win the Champions League. Kai Havertz looks distraught on a weekly basis whenever we don't win. You've got Mason Mount just absolutely happy, but lucky. Oh my God, I'm so chirpy today, but what happened? It really frustrates me. And as a fan after the game, I'm allowed to be upset about that. People are like, you can't police how people feel and react. I'm not policing it. I'm just voicing my opinion of how I feel. You can't tell me not to get frustrated at a footballer when he plays for my club that I support. The club that I consistently this season have had my ru mood ruined for the whole weekend because of decisions that are decided by the players we support. He needs to fix this because I don't understand how his unique selling point at this moment to get that 300k contract or whatever Whatever he's asking for is unproper Chelsea. Yet, that's the what the end. Now on to Mikhailo Mudrik. All right, guys, look. Kukurea passed the ball seven times to Mudrik yesterday. And Kukurea was extremely safe on the ball. And I think we need to add context to why he's so safe on the ball. Number one, Kukurea has been going through a lot on the pitch. He got booed off yesterday by our own fans. I find that hilarious. I always get told, never boo our own players. We shouldn't do that. Oh, Gallagher, when people are criticized Gallagher, oh my God, you shouldn't be doing that. Mount, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Match got win fans back them. Where was the back end for Kukurea yesterday? There wasn't. Yet, and this is what frustrates me more than anything, Kukurea has been playing safe because he doesn't want to make mistakes. And even then, because he's playing so safe, he made a mistake and we conceded a goal. 
That's fine. Mikhail Mudrik needs to get some social media training. He needs to get better management around him. He needs to get a new agent. Because at this moment in time, he is hanging himself out there to dry. When he was trying to force a move from Shakhtar to Arsenal, he was liking tweets, putting stuff on his story. He was liking uh, Instagram posts. He was commenting stuff. He was acting reckless. And now he's at Chelsea and he liked something from a Ukrainian page relating to, it's literally, Kukurea passed to anyone? Fine. Kukurea passed to Mudrik? No, it's that Drake meme. You've all seen it, it's on the screen now. It is unprofessional that Mudrik liked. Later he unliked it, I went and checked. It's not liked, but the number of sources that are reporting this, it just stinks of lack of professionalism. I know he's young and I know these are mistakes that young people make all the time. It's called growing and learning, right? You learn from bad experiences and bad decisions in the past. Hopefully he won't repeat it. But how is this meant to make Kukureyev? Like Kukureyev's already lost confidence. He's already a player who's very rattled. Like this is the thing. He's already overthinking. Yet Mudrik throws him under the bus. You're meant to build a relationship with your left back. Left wing and left back is meant to be a relationship. You're meant to trust each other. You're meant to help each other. And the fact he did that to him, it co caused an initial commotion. It caused more people now excusing Mudrik's performance yesterday, which in my opinion wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. It was good at best, at best it was good. So I don't think Mikhail Mudruk should be using Kukurea as an ex excuse, and I think he should be demanding the ball a little bit more. That's my personal opinion, I want to Now hear. we need to get into the topic I did not want to comment, but evidently a lot of you want to hear my opinion on what I would do with Tuchel, uh, Potter. Bruh, I wish it was. I said from the outset, Potter was never my hiring. I would have kept Tuchel, I've been very consistent with that, but I said it's happened now, so now we need to go and back manager. The manager's been here for 16 league games, okay? 16 league games is three away from a halfway point of a season. We have been very unfortunate with a lot of injuries. We have been very unfortunate with a lot of circumstances and the way they pound out. There wasn't much time initially on the training ground to develop a style of play, to introduce people to the way Potter wants to do things. But for me, I'm gonna throw some outlying numbers at you guys because I think outlying numbers are important. They give you an identity of where the club is going in a correct manner. We've won five games in the six. We've scored 12 goals in 16 games. We've conceded 13 goals in 16 games. That's very good, right? The goal scoring is preposterous. The goal conceding is amazing. So we're kind of yinging and yanging there. We're balancing it out. We've averaged 1.31 points per game. And that is terrible. That is a team that is arguably going to be battling for relegation. That's how bad we are. Since the World Cup, because that's when everyone has been noting it and everyone's been along, right? We've played eight games. We've won two games, Bournemouth and Crystal Palace. In the meantime, we ended up losing to, uh, what's it called, Notting drawing with Nottingham Forest in the process, drawing, losing to Fulham, drawing with Fulham, and drawing to West Ham. All due respect to those clubs. In four games with those clubs, I expect at least three victories as a Chelsea fan. With the quality of squad we have. Saying all that, do I think it's the right time to sack Potter? I don't think it's the right time to sack Potter. I am angry, I am frustrated, I yell, I shout, I am emotional as a fan because that's what I am. Listen, part of the reason you guys love what I do here and a lot of you tell me this is because you say I'm off the cuff and I'm very non-scripted and more importantly, I'm passionate. You can't take the emotion out of me because my passion disappears. I love what I do here, I love this club. And for me, it hurts to see this club played in this manner. It really irritates me because I believe we are better than what we are showing at the moment. Five wins in 16, two wins in 13 is not acceptable for Chelsea Football Club in Italy. Yesterday, a lot of people said to me, well, you know, if we got the penalty, we would have won that game. And if Kai Havertz scored his two chances, it was a completely different tune. I get that, but we didn't. Like, literally, we didn't. And then I can twist this around and say it in this manner. If Brentford took their chances and Kepa didn't have the worldy, we would have lost that game, we wouldn't have got a point earlier on. If Nottingham Forest took their chances, and they would have beat us, we would have lost those points. So I don't know what we're talking about here. We're nitpicking. Reality is the facts are, Potter's not cut out for the job at this moment in time. It's not all his fault, but he's not getting the best out of the talent that he has at his hand. Would I sack him right now? 
No, because I don't think there's a clear candidate that they're gonna go and check. I don't think they know what they want to do. So at this moment in time, we might as well just firm it and just ride this out till the summer. But in the summer, we need to look at his position. We need to see how the season ended because there's no point wasting another season when you've got players of the potential of Enzo Fernandez, potentially Joao Felix, who are gonna be the mainstay of this team. Badi Yashio and Wesley Fafana, look at that base. It's a very nice base. Potentially, Kai Havertz gets replaced with a proper number nine, or maybe Kai stays and Kai actually starts performing well to the standard we know he can. We've got Rhys James, we've got Kepa in goal, who has been actually very decent recently, bar the two mistakes he's had since the World Cup. So we will replace Kepa in the long run. This team will get stronger because the money will be spent. Now we just need to make sure we've got the right manager guide in the ship. So no need for a knee-jerk reaction. Let's stay tuned, let's try to stay positive, because I don't see them sacking him. I cannot come onto this platform on a weekly basis and say sack the manager. You have to sack the manager. It's counterproductive. You'll get bored of it, I'll get bored of it. So I'm gonna look at the positives and I'm gonna try to give you the details of where he can improve. Some of the ways he could have improved, in my opinion. Number one, yesterday, when that penalty incident happens, I need him going mad. I don't need him keeping that composure. Reason he needs to go mad, he causes a commotion with a linesman, you kick the ball out of play, they check VAR, I don't believe the ref doesn't overturn his decision. After the press conference, I need him to use that excuse. We would have won that game, clear penalty. We would have won the game, change the narrative. Ignore the fact that the performance in the second half was bad. It's what world-class managers do. They change it, say, we were fantastic in the first half, we should have been out of sight, ref cost us the game. That's what the me message should have been. It didn't happen. Tactically adjusting it. I don't know what happens in the, in, in the half-time team talk. We come out worse. I don't know how. So, honestly, let's learn from this. Let's move on. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the clips of this video wherever you guys want. Subscribe to the uh, Instagram. Peace out, I'm out.